Welcome back to the Cascade Mountaineers Dynasty. We've got a bit of a easier, take it, e take it easy game after uh, what happened last week with uh, our matchup against Oregon going to overtime and uh, looking like we could potentially lose that game. So we've got this one against Fresno State featuring, figuring to be a bit easier of a ball game as we lead the, uh, the Bulldogs in every category here. Just go ahead and jump right in. Not going to waste any time here. So they got good pass rush at least. Hi everybody. Solid Reese pass Davis rush. With you bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. We'll start with the ball here. And the fans are on their feet awaiting the start of this game as the players line up for the kick. He just drills this one. Looking for the corner. And Da is going to get out to about the 31, 32 yard line. just got to play within themselves. Sometimes you get at home and you get just a little bit too fired up at the beginning of the game. I agree with you. I think sometimes there's a tendency for certain teams to press a little bit because they're trying so hard to keep this home crowd in the game and they've been waiting all week and they're so excited. Sometimes you force a play. Let's let the play naturally come to you and react to it. So we'll see if this team playing at home jumps the gun a little bit or if they just let the game come to them. Not senior day. Senior day is the last game of the season against Montana Tech. But uh, second to last home game here of the season. Campbell gets seven yards. Second down. And they got him for a loss. Never really had a shot. They were on him almost as soon as he took the handoff. It's true. Didn't have a chance. And that's first down run for Campbell as he gains six yards. From their own 42 yard line. Might have got hurt at the end of that play. Wigan gets six. Huh. Right now. I what national award he's up for. He's got to worry about playing this football game. Would not have guessed that Josh Wiggin was uh, an award finalist. Must be a return, best returner award finalist. Play action here. He's going to scramble. Rose. And Jalen Moore comes up with that one in a hole in the defense. Vaselli gets it right to him. We can lose as a yard on that run. Yeah. Campbell got hurt for sure. Probably a bad injury too, if it hasn't updated us already. And he would have got hurt with green uh, stamina. So. Might be done for the rest of the year. And this play is number eight on the drive. He's scrambling. Quarterback's going to run it, and he's got room to work. He's out of bounds. Vaselli gets 18 yards for the first down. Ooh, I thought he got in there. 
Wigan a yard short of the end zone. That'll bring up second and goal. Yep, mild concussion for Charles Campbell, so he will be back. That's his second concussion this season. And Maselli gets into the end zone for the first touchdown with his legs. That'll be a 7-0 lead for Cascade after one drive. And I just, yeah, faked it. Cool. Didn't mean to do that, but oh well. I'm not burning a timeout this early in the game for it. That's the most time I've ever had to throw a fake field goal pass like that. It's probably because they were covering the fake field goal pass, but they didn't do it well. Nelson Quinn gets six. He feel, yeah, I feel like he's been there for a while. He was definitely there last year. So it's second down now. They need about four yards to pick up the first. They come out of an empty backfield. What an athletic pass breakup from Sam Hender in there. He's turned into a really solid option in the secondary. Was it 81? Who was it? I wish they told you. They'll line up for another third down play because of the penalty. Well, here you're in a third down situation, and then someone makes a mental mistake. It makes your blood boil if you're a coach. Third down, nine to go. Long to 26. Oh, what are we doing? 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 Get him, Payne. The ten. And they Terrible. Wow. He shouldn't even have got the first down. We had a guy right there, Hendren. What are we doing, guys? Terrible. Terrible. Awful. Wow. Man, just a defense that never ceases to amaze you with their inability. Adam Lauer gets it all done with his legs. Gains, I believe, 72 yards rushing on that drive alone. Really pathetic. Really pathetic. Wow. Let's take a trip out to Corvallis. The Beavers continuing to pound the rock on the ground and score a touchdown. Sends it sailing downfield. He's to the 10. Tackle the 17 yard line. And offense is back on the field after running the ball very well on their last drive. This offensive line really opened up some big gaps for the running back last time. And they make the stop at the 19. From their own 19 yard line, it's second down. Feeds it to the back. And he makes it out to about the 21 yard line. He just doesn't have any acceleration. That 84 excel that he has is just killer to his ability to be an effective ball carrier. Kim Dichie, 16 yard gain on the pass. Play action. 
and defense coming. Gets it out to the wide end, he's got the first, and he holds it in. He's tackled. Baselli barely able to get that pass off. Nearly went down. And just uh, get it to Diabuade for the first down. Nothing for Kim Dichi on that run. Nice little pick up there for Wigan, who gets eight. Kim Dietschy gets the first down with a nine-yard carry. A sack, really. Okay. Yeah. He would have been he would have been picking up at least at least ten yards on that scramble. Folks, that's the end of quarter number one, and we got a pretty good ball game on our hands so far. The Mountaineers lead it by one. And we're ready for more football here in quarter number two. In the shotgun and five wide outs. And he's tackled at the 21. Wow, a long game, but still not enough for the first. Well, the offense hurt themselves by digging themselves into a hole on first and second down. So the defense didn't really have to put too much thought in how to defend on that third down. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. And Wiggins going to get the touchdown. No problem, 21 yards. And that'll make it 14 to seven, 15 to seven with the PAT. And he hits the PAT. A quick update now, here's Reese. The Beavers of Oregon State, ready to play in Corval. This is a game we've been watching closely all day long. And for Washington State, they're in danger of losing two straight. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. Boy, the two offensive coordinators have to be loving Ooh, a little, uh... ...over our booth next to us and see how much they're enjoying it with a big smile on their face. The defensive coordinators, on the other hand, might be looking for a pink slip on Monday. A little wildcat here from the, uh, the, the Bulldogs. neck and neck the whole way. Oh, wow, we are just... So good on defense today. Once again, Seto was a run to the right. They ran the ball to the right. And we gave up 43 yards. Seems legit. There we go. Way to do something.
Wow, big tackle from Justin Cook there. He doesn't get that tackle. It's a touchdown as Jalen Bedford only had one guy to beat. Whitehurst comes up with the tackle to force a fourth down and, yep, a field goal here. Defense has played well despite giving up two chunk plays. Darius Hollis gets some serious penetration, likely forcing that miss. Momentum swings have been fairly even. And with so little separation, this game can be drastically changed on just one or two plays. Five guys will be out in the pattern as the end of Kim Dietschy gets the first down, gain of 13. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 36 yard line. Oh, it's going to be picked. J.J. Wadley doesn't come up with the interception. Should have. Yeah, huge break for Baselli there. Wigan gets a first and ten. First and down. Picks up ten. Nothing there for Kimbichi on the screen pass. There was no one else on that route, or on on a route actually. So there was quite literally. Wow, wow, that's a touchdown. If all we do is block that one guy who made the tackle, no one blocks him. 58. Walter Cook the third misses the the block. It costs us two yards on what was a sure fire touchdown. Sure fire. Oh, I love when we shoot ourselves in the foot. I love that. Let's go. I'm so pissed right now. I'm so pissed. That interception does not happen if we block on the play before it, right? We did that a couple of times last week too. We we dropped passes or we we didn't block and it didn't we didn't get a touchdown because of it and then we turned the ball over the next play. It's incredible how stupid these guys are sometimes. Just throws this one away. Great job by the defense of getting after that quarterback. And right now, I think they've got him with some happy feet. He appears to be a bit rattled. Watch two, watch two. And he throws it away. Third down now. They need to get it to the 17. Nice pass break up there by Malik Antoine. Can't gain solid yardage if the defense isn't concerned about the passing game. They're going to end up trouting the line of scrimmage, expecting a run on every down. Kicks up. Wow, this kicker having a nightmare of a day here. All right, if I'm going to call a play and it's going to set up as a touchdown, I ask that whoever is on the line blocks. Shouldn't have to ask because it's your job, but we made that very clear on the last drive that we needed, we needed to do that because uh, apparently the idiots that we brought in 
to this school to to be offensive linemen and block don't understand that that's why we brought them here. They think they must think that we want them to give up tackles in the backfield because that's what they that's what they're doing at a high level right now. Better than any other offensive line in the country, really. And Wigan is into Bulldog territory with that run. Another nice run there for Josh Wiggin. Jalen Moore comes up with the grab, 18 yards on the game. Sully just barely got that pass off. From the 14 yard line, first down. He's going to try and scramble. And Moore catches the touchdown pass from Baselli. Man, in the first three plays, Fresno State is going to get a massive chunk play, and then our defense is going to lock in. Can we just stop giving up the chunk play? We're not doing anything different any other play. We're just not tackling the rest of the plays. Sam Hendren picks that one off, and he's going to take it to the house. Like, why did we have to give up a giant chunk play before that? What, what was the point of the chunk play? Just to help their stats look better. That's what it was. Luke Smith gets 20 yards, so there's the chuck play. Can't wait to see what we do on the next three plays because it's surely going to be like sack, sack, pick. Rome Morgan gets 20 yards because uh, our pass rush is non-existent. Not in field goal range, though, because Lord knows their field goal range is non-existent. Ooh, wow. We're just getting eat, ate up. Defense doesn't even look like it knows how to play defense right now. Yeah, he went from eight passing yards to 61 in three plays. 
Love that. Hendren making a big tackle on Jalen Bedford after just three yards there. That one goes out of bounds. Third down, seven yards to go. Ball on the 10. The quarterback in the gun, empty backfield. Five wide receivers in the formation. Throws a bullet. Oh, Robert Payne drops the pick. It's incomplete. Defense does a really good job here of timing it up and knocking the ball away. Here comes the field goal team. See if they can convert on lucky try number three. Oh, and he'll split the uprights. Look at him go. Wigan to return. And a nice big return there for Wigan. It's still only the second quarter. We've got a lot of football left, but I've got to say, this one is teetering on the brink of a blowout. They come out in a five wide set. Pick. Should have been. Yeesh. Guy didn't look like he was ready to make that play, but he did. Second and ten. Ball on the 45. And he hits him hard at the 48 yard line. And that'll do it for the first half here. Cascade leads it 29 to 10. The Mountaineers. In front by All right, Reese and David, thanks guys. Defense probably gave up way more yards than they should have, though, because of it. Or because of a, some chunk plays. Gave up way more points than they should have, that's for sure. I'll give them the uh, three points at the end of the half, but the touchdown should have never happened. I know that. And Luke Smith going nowhere as Hendren brings him down. Hendren's just built different, all right. Fresno State doesn't have the mental fortitude to scheme around Hendren. What a run by Nelson Quinn to get the first down there. How did he do it? I have no idea. Because P.J. Adams should have brought him down. And then Jawan Whitehurst should have brought him down. And then Jake Brown should have brought him down before the first down. Oh, my gosh. We're just going full stupid here as Nelson Quinn runs for another 10-yard gain. And Jake Brown gets a sack because Adam Lauer basically runs into him. That'll bring up second and 16 here. They find themselves in a hole here after that sack. It's second and long. And that's going to be a Jaron Jefferson sack. Loss of eight. So they've gone minus 14 on the last two plays. So Adam Lauer's just getting teed off on. Moves up in the pocket. Oh, TJ Wheatley could have had that one. Fourth and 24, they're going to punt.
They should fake it, though. They'd get it. That'd be sick. Fifteen yard return for Josh Wiggin. He's probably having his best day in the return game today. So we're just about ready to return to action. They'll spread the field with five wide. Scrambling around. Going deep. Lays it out there. Can't connect. And we just can't get anything over the top anymore. That's all we could get with Tyree Otto on, and now we can't get it. Anything from their own 44 yard line, it's second down. Wigan makes a nice move to get the uh, the extra yardage there, third and four. Sebastian Kimdichi up the middle. It's a foot race, and he will win. That'll be a touchdown on the ground. Sebastian Kimdichi, 49-yard run. Probably his first rushing touchdown, not his first touchdown, period. for them so far. They should just come out and play loose and easy because they've got nothing to lose. Gets it out to his receiver in a hurry. Tackle. Lance Hammond gets his first grab. It's a game of four. Second and six coming up. It's second and six. Ball on the 29-yard line. Robert Payne kills Luke Smith for, despite getting the first down, he got hit hard. Empty backfield, quarterback in the gun, five wide receivers. That might get uh, roughing the passer. Wow, Luke Hammond has barely, or Lance Hammond, barely touched the field, and he's balling harder than anyone on our team as he uh, muscles his way for a first down when it should have been about a six-yard game. I don't know. Flower got popped pretty good yet again on that, that play despite getting the pass off. to the wide out first down there you go good read by the quarterback to give the offense a new set of downs if the defense wants Luke Smith to has man, like 80 percent of their receiving yards today Pan fee gets eight yards that makes it second and two it's second down and they're about two yards away from the sticks They'll line up with five wide receivers. Why did no one cover him? Why did no one cover him? Oh my gosh. It's man coverage. You have, it's a one-to-one -one assignment. I was just covering the sweep play. Why didn't the DB follow that guy? P.J. Adams can't keep up with a wide receiver in coverage. Give me a freaking break on that garbage. I know I know one covered him because I ran over there like I was going to, but I wasn't. Another nice return there for Josh Wiggin. Wiggins. 
So it's time to see this offense go to work again. This defense couldn't stop them from moving the ball and inevitably finding the end zone. Fakes it, and the quarterback scrambles. Runs with it, and he's got room. He's Whoa, super late there. The as Maselli gets popped out of bounds. Love seeing that. No call, of course. It's second down, five to go. Ball on their own 48. Quatrez Diabwate gets 20 yards with some fancy feet after the catch. Wow, just some hard running from Josh Wiggin there. Trey Pohl could have breathed on him and he would have fallen over there. From the 33-yard line, second down. And here's a quick throw. Oh, man, double coverage. Sick. Let's go. Pick number 10. Oh, yes. Yes, I love failing my goal because we throw six interceptions in the span of three games. I love that. Oh man, I'm so I I'm so unbelievably mad right now. I thought Justin Cook was a, seat, uh, a junior this entire year. Nice. Give me a freaking break on that crap. What caused the fumble? What, ca what, what caused the fumble? The clean pitch? Give me a break. This game is so screwing. Just destroying Baselli's stats at the end of the year here. Couldn't have played a better eight games, and then the frickin' game comes in here and just absolutely trashes the hard work. Here he goes. Makes it out to about the 26. Third down, and they need to get it to the 19. And Jalen Moore is going to walk into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. Wow, how about that call for the tight end? Big payoff. Well, the offensive coordinator has wanted to incorporate this young player into their passing attack, and he couldn't have picked a better time to get in the ball. And he adds the extra point. Reese Davis joins us in the studio with this update. Reese? The Badgers came into the game ranked 11. And now we're waiting to see how far they'll fall. The upset is complete. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. Nice kick, plenty of distance. And they can forget about returning this one. I hope they show some fight here and try to stay competitive. If you're going to get blown out, you at least want to go down swinging. Athletic pass breakup from Sam Hendren there. Second down, 10 to go. Ball on their own 25. Yeah, Adam Lauer can't complete a pass to save his life now. Especially when the defense starts to get pressure, you've got to either get rid of that football or check it down or take off and run. Oh, it is a slip screen. TJ Wheatley lights up Nelson Quinn. Loss of two, and that'll do it for the third quarter here. Oh, let's say punt away. There we go. One quarter to go, and we may be looking at some mop-up duty. The Mountaineers are up big. Well, folks, we head into the fourth quarter, and this one is a blowout. And he makes it out to about the 
the 47-yard line. Early in the fourth quarter, and this one we know is over. It's an opportunity for some subs to play on one side and maybe to play for pride on the other. Gets it out to the wide out. He's got the first. 21 yards to Sebastian Kimdichie for the first down. He should probably be player of the game. He's playing really well. Cotton Moya gets his first grab. It's a gain of 12. Jalen Moore actually blocked the defender into Kim Dichi there. That's so cool. What a teammate. Now he's scrambling. Decides to take it himself, and he's got it. Touchdown. What made this so impressive was first his ability to see where the space was to run, and then the athletic ability. To and Lagania boots it through, and it's 50 to 17. It's not even a contest. Justin Cook deflects that one. Could add a second pick. From their own 25-yard line. Second down. Here in footsteps, that one pass is dropped, and that'll bring up third and ten, five wide look here. Whitehurst makes the tackle a yard shy of the line to gain, and that'll bring on the punt team. Let's get the uh, second team offense in here. Nothing going for John Sutton there. Loss of three. Mainly just trying to get uh, Gingold, get the arm going, get the arm warm a little bit. Oof, Dichie got lit up, but it's a gain of 15. I think he already is, but a good chance that Kimdichi ends this game as our leading receiver and leading rusher. The only thing I'd be unsure of is if he was our leading receiver at this point. That's why you got to get the arm going on Gingold. He misses a wide open Kadamian. I can't remember his name. Pass out to the tight end, but it's incomplete. 
Just a brutal uh, pass there from Gingold. Fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. And Kimdichi gets the first down. He's at 99 yards rushing today. Man, we just need Kimdichi to get a yard for 100 here. Come on, just let him have it. Second and 10, ball on the 40. There we go. There's 105 for Kimdichi on the ground today. Definitely our leading rusher. No problem for Lagania there. Five miles per hour wind in his face. Well, he'll raise you a 51 yard field goal. And he got all of this one. Great kick. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Well, late in the fourth quarter, this game has been over for a long time, and now we just want to get out of here like these two teams do. They come out in an empty backfield. He's in trouble. Tackle at the 35. Jalen Bedford gets to the first, or no, it's a 10-yard gain, but not enough for the first down. Lauer narrowly escapes a uh, pass rush from Jacob Brown that would have put him on the on the ground. Six yard line. Ooh, going uh going a little crazy here with the Wildcat late in the game. We have less than a minute to go. PJ Adams, Robert Payne, drop Luke Smith for the loss. Whitehurst tackles Lauer before he gets the first down. Third and five coming up. And TJ Wheatley gets the athletic acrobatic interception. It's going to be a pick six. Let's see if I can burn enough time off the clock. And I actually cost him the touchdown. Look at that. <laughs> oh, no. Who got in his way? Who, like, tackled him from our team? That's what I want to know. Because that's the only reason he didn't get it. It didn't show who it was. That sucks. TJ Wheatley should have an uh, pick six. It's my fault. I, I accept full responsibility. There it is anyway. Gingold doesn't even have positive passing yards, but he has a touchdown. That'll do it. 60 to 17. Fresno State never stood a chance. Uh, thank you for watching. Sebastian Kimdichi is my player of the game. So be sure to tune back in next week for the first ever matchup against Montana Tech.